In this video, we will look at creating our socket, which will later be used for communication between two connections. First, let's create a header to store the socket handle data type. I'm going to call this socket handle. And we'll need to include the windsock header again. So we'll include that define to cut out a lot of that extra stuff in the header file. We're going to put this type def inside of the pnet namespace and do type def socket socket handle. Now the reason that we're doing this is because later when we port this to Linux, Linux will use integers for the socket handles and Winsock uses this socket data type. This way we'll be able to just reference both by socket handle and have a define here that will choose which one to use based on our operating system. Next, we are going to create an enumerator for our results to be returned from our functions. I'm going to call this pResult. It's going to work similar to how hResults work. Later, we will also put in a function that takes in a pResult and returns back a string for what the message is associated with that specific value. We have one more enumerator to add. And this will be for the IP version being used. For now, we are just going to design this around Internet Protocol version 4, and then later on in the series, we will cover porting it to version 6. Now let's begin our socket class. So let's go ahead and add a header. We are just going to call this socket. There's a few things we'll need. We'll, of course, need the socket handle. We will need P result. We will need the IP version. So we're going to wrap this in our pnet namespace. And right off the top, I know that I'm going to need uh, public getters to get my current handle value and to get the IP version. And I'll also want to be storing the IP version in the handle inside of this class. So we're going to default the IP version to version 4, which this will be uh, set in the constructor. And we're going to default the handle to invalid socket, which this is a define inside of WinSock. For a socket, before we use it, we must create that socket. And when we were done with the socket, we must close that socket. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a create function that returns a P result and a close function that returns a P result. The last thing we are going to need is just our constructor. And our constructor will take in the IP version, which will default to version 4, and the handle, which will default to invalid socket. Let's go ahead and generate these definitions. All right, inside of our CPP file, let's wrap this in the pnet namespace. So what we're going to do for the constructor is we're just going to set the IP version to match the parameter that got passed in, as well as for handle. You're also going to have an assert. So we need to include the assert header. We're going to make sure that they are using IPv4 until we implement version 6. Let's go down to our getters and set up the git handle to return the handle and git ip version to return the ip version. Now let's look at our create function. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put that same assert in here and that's because this function will have different code depending on which internet protocol version we're using. Next we're going to make sure that the handle is null because I shouldn't be trying to create a socket where the handle's already been initialized. So we'll say if the handle is not equal to invalid socket, then that's an error because we should not be trying to create a socket when we already have a socket handle. We're just going to re return the not yet implemented error and come back to that later. Next, we are going to create our socket. So what we will do is we will set our handle equal to, we will call a function called socket. The first uh, parameter is the address family, which we're using Internet Protocol version 4, so we will use AFINet. If we were using version 6 here, we would pass in AFINet 
six. For the type, uh, we are using TCP, which is a stream-based protocol. So we will pass in sock stream. And for the protocol, we are using TCP. So we will put IP proto TCP. Now let's take a look at the documentation to see how socket works. Now I've gone down to the return value area just to see if we can tell if it was a success or a failure. So if no error occurs, the socket will return the descriptor referencing the new socket, so it'll, ha it'll return the socket handle. Otherwise, we will get back in valid socket, which is what we have our socket initialized to anyways. And we can get the specific error code by calling something called WSA get last error. For now, what we are going to do is we're going to see if it failed. And if it did, we're just going to store the error code in an integer. We're going to return our error code, our P result error code where it's not yet implemented. And then we will come back to this later and look at the specific error codes that we get. Otherwise, once we get down here, it was successful. So we'll return success. And we have successfully created our socket create function. So now let's go down to our socket close function. The first thing we're going to check for is that our socket is not an invalid handle. If it is, we will return the not yet implemented error code. However, the reason this is an error is because why would you be trying to close a socket that was never created? Next, we are going to try to close the socket by calling close socket and passing in the handle of our socket. Now let's take a look real quick at the documentation for closed socket, and we can see that if no error occurs, closed socket returns zero. Otherwise, we will get back a value of socket error, and the specific error code can be retrieved by calling WSA get last error. So we're going to check if it was equal to zero, because that would mean it's successful. So let's say if result is not equal to zero, so if an if an error occurred, then we're going to get the error code, and then we are going to return our P result error code. Otherwise, if we get down here, then the socket was successfully closed. We are going to reset the value of our socket handle to be invalid socket because at this point it has been closed. And then we are just going to return the success P result. So now we have made our basic socket class. Let's go into our include me header and add our new headers in here. We will just have to include the socket header because it includes the socket handle, the P result, and the IP version. Now we can finally create our first socket and our server and our client. What we are going to do is we are going to create our socket instance. We're going to say if socket.create is equal to p result success then we will go ahead and call socket close and then let's just add in little output messages here so if it's successfully created we're printing out socket successfully created and then we're closing the socket otherwise we are going to print out to see error socket failed to create. So I'm just going to take this code and copy it into the client. So now they are the same. And let's rebuild everything. Right. And we're going to attempt to run the server. All right, we get socket successfully created and then press any key to continue since we reached the end of our main function. In the next video, we're going to look at setting socket options.